ông quay cho ông cầm được rồi cả hầm to cái chấm đa ca này tại vị thị xã Mạ Ca đại tam cao biệt phía bằng cái tục cứ nơi này đi to này đi tại vị thị vị phía xa này đào đời tăng sùng núa đã chuẩn bu nẹt chuẩn niến để biết chân lỡ đời cầm tầm nàng xã Pìa nhà Kalam ji lang reka ampi san pip watamien nang a watamien kiki nang bokul dai long yin deh nang chiu nyo chiu rum nang kanong kajam naka sam naka ni nuk rai sai kol bati song krop lo bathien krop pia kiki tiang ong nai rin kai ni min watamien song makon ba okon Lain ini mohon dengan pedal bidika junter krom damang sapinya damai minokah minoka tang tunggu dari dal jepuh dari jam ini orang jam dah semrat lu semna som jumun pi ti mui ke semna som dah ikhlas rubah krom bidbi kapi kedai nunci hari neng ti pi ke semna som rubah krom bidbi kapi kedai lu ingzuri pepon neng Som menaui orang yang berada di Samaraka Menaui tengah saya Tengah sok di mempunyai Kaya-kaya kena senam pipon tapi Di mulai terakhir jemraik Tuan muat Tidak tahu tentang semenaui som Dari kesar Bahkan kerana menjadi kapi kedai nun kia Orang yang berada telah terbong Bahan tertul Semenaui lelaki tipi Bahkan kerana menjadi kapi kedai nun kia Tang bithin Chất sập tầm bớt Anh nụ thiên buôn Này vì thiên tình khăn nông Xong cả anh nhạt Vì ông nhìm rẻ Nằm mây bà bà Ai cơ sở thầm mây Xong rạp Xu đánh đau Nẹ chùm niên Để viết chất lỡ Ai cơ sở Y Mà rồi Chất tập bí Sẽ là một phây bớt Sẽ là bí Nước khăn nông xong nào ní Mì dạ vì Cả bí cơ đầy Nguồn chí Xong đại ai cơ sở thầm mây Chùm nôn đọc mùi Nơi chùm bùa mục Ông nhìm rẻ ai lưu mưu than nơi xóm nào xóm tìm mùi đồ bọc luôn tạm bị thiên bài tập bởi buôn nơi bị thiên tây khăn nông ai cơ xa y mà rồi chất sập bí xa lạc mà phê mùi xa lạc mùi đại phá ai lưu mưu than đọc đáy đôi đại bàn xóm rách kà bì thằng ngày tì đọc đồng bầy khai kà kà đà chân nằm bì bọn đọc bí ông chân nông nhầm rẻ xóm rách bạc đất xét nơi xóm nào xóm đồ bọc mì tập bí kà bì kà đầy nguồn chìa Sedai zaman raj TP, lepas zaman asam ada bahagian rombeng tapi kapi kedai lok yang seri, nyom, dia berthin, orang yang berah, orang niem, orang yang berah, sombong kol pihak kaj, cun tay lok sedai cakram civil karai, dan bayi menghai yang pi head pal dengan zaman raj lepas zaman asam ni, som cuy lok sedai cakram. Thank you, President. Cakram karai, som aku kon lok berthin. Trial Chamber has deliberated on the request made by the Defence Council for Yang Sari, Mr. Karnavas, and has decided to decline it. The reasons are as follows. The application itself was that the Chamber not sit on Friday, the 20th of July, due to a pre-existing commitment made by Mr. Karnavas to attend and lead a seminar. The reasons for declining the request are as follows. The parties have known at the outset of this trial that although the Chamber would try to ensure that Fridays were kept free of sitting commitments, the parties must be flexible because there would be occasions when it was necessary to sit on Friday. This is one of those weeks because we have lost two days of sitting time already. 
in his uh, oral submissions yesterday, Mr. Canavas uh, drew an analogy between the uh, request made by the prosecutors uh, for a delay in the uh, start of this week's proceedings. Uh, due to the illness uh, of one of its prosecutors who was scheduled to lead the questioning of the expert uh, uh, Professor Chandler. Uh, and in Mr. Carnivus's submission, uh, if we, uh, having granted that application, we were obliged to grant his. There is no clear analogy between the two situations. Uh, the prosecutors could not have anticipated the illness uh, of uh, its um, uh, uh, of one of its members, uh, and uh, as was noted yesterday, the prosecutors have already been criticised for not having in place uh, a um, fallback position uh, in the event of a sudden emergency such as they were faced with. There is no such uh, clear situation in relation to the uh, request made by Mr. Carnivus. He has no of uh, this God commitment man, which he made for the Friday God of this week, this week. And he has known of it, presumably, for some time. Uh, he ought to have anticipated the possibility that uh, the court would be obliged to sit this Friday and had in place uh, an alternative. In any event, he has national co-counsel who is well qualified and experienced uh, and will be available to uh, uh, represent uh, Yang Sari tomorrow. Uh, finally, the chamber has taken into account the absence of Mr. Carnivas for tomorrow and will make sure that the questioning by the Yang Sari team does not begin until Monday of next week. Uh, that is the decision of the chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. สมคุณสมจุยลูกมิตรวิทย์มีปัญหาให้ Thank you, Your Honor. Good, good morning, morning, everyone. Just very briefly, for the same reasons that I articulated yesterday, or I should say attempted to articulate, we take exception to the ruling that was uh, just read out with respect to our motion on the admission of documents. Those documents are clearly relevant. They're in the public domain. No one objects to them. There's no prejudice to any party. They should be admitted. They should be allowed to use them. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, President. I, I, I just want to make it clear that um, the Nguyen Chia defense team, as all defense teams, have the right to appeal any decision, and the Chamber does not see the necessity for making an objection for the record. You have that right in any event, uh, and uh, whether it's uh, an appeal that would fit under our rules at the time of the verdict or an appeal immediate appeal, you have that right. There is no need to make repeated objections to the rulings. Uh, so I hope we've clarified that for you, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Yanutsi. Your Honor, it is, my, it is my national practice to make exceptions for the record, so I will continue to do that, and I think it benefits the public as well. We do not require you to make exceptions. It may be your national practice. It is not the practice here. We will assume that each time the court makes a ruling that is adverse to you, that you will consider whether or not you will appeal. There is no need, and the President uh, will uh, not expect any such objections for the record in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. 
good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. I have three matters. One is Mr. Ngsui's presence in his health. Two, an ex parte communication that occurred between the prosecutor and Mr. Chandler yesterday after you left the bench. And three, uh, we wish to know uh, what exact documents Mr. Chandler reviewed over the night. We will be making this a continuing uh, request since uh, he is on the stand, he is under oath, and he should have been prepared. And if he and we, and a request was made for him to keep track of all of the material that he was looking, that he was going to be reviewing in preparation for his testimony, and from what we heard yesterday, uh, he intentionally and uh, deliberately ignored that instruction from the court. So those are the three topics. First, Mr. Inksiri's health. I am told by Mr. Inksiri that he is unable to sit here for long periods of time, especially in the morning, because not only of his back, but also because he needs to use the restroom almost every five or ten minutes. And it's exhausting. I've attempted to, and I say attempted, uh, to meet with the uh, doctor and to get from the doctor his uh, medical opinion. Shockingly, and it may be the practice in Cambodia, but I'm unaware of anywhere else in the world, uh, the doctor uh, is unwilling uh, to uh, explain to us what exactly is wrong with Mr. Inksiri. Instead, he indicated that he passed along a report and to the chamber, and, and so I'm uh, left with uh, my client's representations to me. Uh, in that, uh, since we are in this position, uh, we respectfully request for the doctor to answer uh, what exactly uh, is his position, what is the medical opinion concerning Mr. Inksiri's presence. He has been following uh, the, uh, the testimony from, his, uh, from the holding cell. He is participating. We are receiving instructions. But uh, we do think that the constant, uh, uh, the constant having to get up and going to the toilet every five minutes and the pain in his back certainly interferes with his right to effectively participate in his own defense. So uh, that's the first matter. Room, I mean, as far as the ex parte communication, I uh, noticed that there was uh, a communication going on uh, between the prosecutor and Mr. Chandler. It would appear that Mr. Chandler initiated the conversation. I wasn't aware of that initially, but I saw that it was ongoing, and I brought it to the attention. In fact, I yelled from here that such communications are forbidden. I think it is wholly improper for a witness who is on the stand to then be having communication with the prosecutor. Now, Mr. Chandler, albeit the son of a lawyer, may not be aware that that is the practice. The prosecutor and the lawyers ought to know that once a witness is on the stand, there should be no communication. I was informed over the, uh, by the prosecutor that it was merely for scheduling purposes. I don't care what it was about. The answer uh, should have been, Mr. Chandler, Chandler, I can't speak to you. If you, if you wish to speak, uh, if you wish to make inquiries about scheduling, bring that up to those who are handling you. I think we need clear guidance. There may have been an overlap or over, uh, a lapse. Uh, nonetheless, I take these matters very seriously. And I think we all should. It's not a civil party. This is an expert witness. He's on the stand. He's under oath. And he's consulting documents as he's going along. And from his own public admissions, everybody here, all of the accused, are guilty and he opined as to what he thinks the accused will be doing in court. So in light of all of these circumstances, I think we need some clear guidance. And I can understand the prosecutor being in a very awkward position where the witness comes up and obviously is very close to the witness and the witness is merely asking for scheduling, but nonetheless, we need a clear guidance. And lastly, Mr. President, if Mr. Chandler is on the stand and he's testifying and he had weeks and months to prepare, and he's the doyen of the historians in Cambodia. 
We want to know what material he's consulting. And I don't want to hear some global answers such as the closing order. What are the exact documents that he's looking at to prepare himself and perhaps recalibrate his testimony to fit the prosecution's brief? Because that's what we're submitting uh, he would be doing because of his publicly stated positions thus far. And I know that he's not under any instructions, but I think it's only human, it's, it's within human nature to recalibrate your answers in anticipation of what may be happening. So those are my the three topics, uh, Mr. President, and perhaps you may wish to ask questions of the doctor first so we know when the injury should continue to be present in court this morning or whether he should go to the holding cell and uh, participate uh, as he has been doing throughout most of the proceedings. Thank you very much. លោកមេខាកណ្ឌវាសូមបញ្ជាក់មិនដងទៀតតើលោកធ្វើសំណើសុំគ្រាន់តែឲ្យអង្គជម្រះសួរទៅស្ដាប់នៅសំដីរបស
then perhaps the doctor can take the stand, be placed under oath, and give testimony. But I am told that he gave his information to the legal officer of the tribunal, of the trial tribunal. Thank you. ສົມຈຸຍລົງ <coughs> <coughs> អ្នកដែលត្រូវឆ្លើយតបផ្ទាល់ជាមួយ <coughs> ចាក្រមគឺមានតែការនៃមានពេលនេះទេដែលភាគីអាចសួរអ្នកជំនាញនៅចំពោះមុខចៅក្រមបានហើយដូចជាកណ្ដីដែលដែលលោកកាន់វ
on the issue of documents, um, I don't think we need to waste any more time on this, Your The professor has been asked to prepare a list. He indicated he has already prepared that list in part. He will continue to add to it. Uh, as we go along today, uh, we will be uh, showing specific documents to the professor, and he will be opining uh, in part based on those documents. So this mystery that the defence uh, wishes to pretend is in place um, needs to be dispelled. Uh, we will be dealing with specific documents. Uh, there is nothing uh, controversial about the professor uh, looking at them and giving his opinions based on years of research. And while I'm on that matter, uh, I also wish to uh, record our objection to uh, both yesterday uh, and today, uh, the uh, Council for Mr. Ying Sari effectively seeking to intimidate the witness. We heard yesterday comments about uh, their intention to place Professor Chandler under great fire. We heard today, uh, again, offhand comments about his supposed bias. Um, none of these matters relate to their application to do with documents. This is a blatant attempt to intimidate the witness. It is a blatant attempt to, uh, uh, if you like, give him a preview uh, of the attack that they think they can put him on. Um, and it is an attempt to uh, make it more difficult for him to testify. So we take great exception to it. Um, Your Honours, uh, subject to you dealing with uh, the issue of Yingsiri's attendance in court, um, we would like to get on with the examination, if at all possible, in the shortest time. Thank you. 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 Thank ຈໍຕະຫຼອບຫຼັງຈັ່ງດີຍັງມາຈຸມລັບຫຼືໃຫ້ນິຕິວິທີຜູ້ກີມຸ້ຍສູ່ຕໍາຫນອງນີ້
Gặp xe anh Tiên Mr. President, as I told you in my first submission this morning, it is related to the third issue raised by Mr. Karnavas. In order to facilitate your proceedings, I proposed to discuss it after the other issues were raised and discussed by the prosecution, the health of uh, Mr. Yeng Sari and the ex parte communications. So, I submit that I uh, should be allowed to uh, give my submission on the issue that is related to the documents as discussed by Professor Chan. It will be a quite simple edition, taking no more than one or two, mission, uh, one or two minutes. បាទអរគុណអង្គមាននឹងអនុញ្ញាតបន្តឥឡូវនេះយើងស្ដាប់លោកវិបាកជាមណ្ឌិតឡើងនិយាយរៀបរាប់អំពីបញ្ហាស្
bằng chấm đẹp ở côn lô cơ bây giờ mình đất đại ban thưa bài ca chuyện chấm ba hàng bây giờ thanh tập hiệp sốc tập hiệp rồi bảo lục yên giới đại mình là tập hiệp nông ca ai chẳng quỳ được nông tam đàn nông cây chấm đại ca tam đại ca đấy ai chơi mười màu từ pi màu luôn hay bảy hàng đi ông chấm đẹp nâng tầm bảy lên tầm đào thông lo cốt nơi nông ở ban môn pel tầm rạ lực tìm mui nơi bậc này và lục ở nhà chơi chơi can tì cái này vịnh ban hải và chỉ cách một to anh em đã xong đòn bị thi ca chun từ đồng nàng sập đi nhẹ oh sorry xong tu ở nơi nơi bảy hàng mới chết xong chơi lục mấy đứa bị ăn đã chết cà phê cái này lục nuôn chía dương anh nhát ở lục bà pe bảy liệt khay ban hải vì pro pe bảy liệt đại từ bắt đầu ở phía kỳ xã xã phía nhà nâng bị đứa bị nằm mục đôi chì ốc chả ăn hay ngày nay ốc chết chết mười mao hay Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be brief while trying to speak slowly to not um, incommodate the translators. We heard Professor Chandler say yesterday that uh, he had studied the closing order before uh, his testimony before your chamber, and I want to make it clear that we do, do not take issue with that fact as such. But as Professor Chandler has indicated, this closing order has changed his mind on certain issues. We think it's relevant to note that the closing order is no more than a conclusion by the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. And I would like to add that it is an indictment, and therefore it is inculpatory by nature. Considering that, I think it's important going forward with the testimony of Mr. Chandler that we know, that all the parties know, whether or not he had access to all the underlying documents of the closing order. And if not, which particular documents did he have access to, which particular documents did he not have access to? And I uh, recall Something the professor said yesterday, and I do not have the transcript, so I forget the specific wording, but I believe Professor Chandler stated, I wish I had had access to that information or to those documents, and Professor Chandler could clarify that to us. So it is clear that certain information in the closing order is new. We would like to know whether Professor Chandler bases his change of opinion on certain matters on certain new documents that he did not have access to before, and if so, what those documents were. I will also state, just to be clear, that it is quite obvious to us that Professor Chandler did not have access to all documents that underlie the closing order simply because they are of a confidential nature and they were produced by the OCJ during the investigation. So to a certain extent, uh, Professor uh, Chandler uh, cannot uh, know uh, the underlying uh, documents. Uh, Again, uh, we uh, don't, uh, don't uh, play uh, any blame on uh, Professor uh, Chandler uh, or anybody uh, else for that matter uh, uh, regarding uh, that circumstance, but uh, it should be clear uh, going uh, forward uh, what uh, documents uh, has he relied uh, on. Because as uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kronovas, has pointed uh, out, uh, the testimony uh, of uh, Mr. Chandler has become muddled in a way, has become tainted in a way, by reading uh, the closing uh, order. Again, we place no blame on anyone for that. It is simply uh, human nature, but uh, we need to verify uh, what uh, Professor Chandler bases his knowledge on today before you. So um, perhaps today will be too late for Professor Chandler to provide this kind of information, but we will be coming back to this issue during our questioning of Professor Chandler. So uh, perhaps the trial chamber could instruct, um, perhaps as a matter of fair warning to the professor, that we will be coming back to this issue so the professor could prepare for this uh, eventuality. My, uh, those were my submissions. Thank you.
Thank you, Your Honours. Um, I think my learned friend has both asked and answered the question. Um, the attachments to the closing order are indeed confidential, um, and therefore the professor is obviously very unlikely to have access to them. Um, I'm surprised we're coming back to this point because I, I, I believe we, we uh, uh, had found a way forward. Um, essentially, uh, we will be taking the professor through specific documents and through, through his specific conclusions. Uh, where he is of the view that those conclusions have been altered or affected by the closing order, we have asked him to so indicate. Um, and, and I think that's where the matter can rest. The closing order is, of course, a, a set of allegations uh, which the professor has had access to. Um, and it, it may have provided additional information and he will indicate that. Um, I, I, don't I, I don't think it would be appropriate at all. Um, and, and counsel indicates this as well to expect the professor to now try and reconstruct the uh, supporting materials for closing order to which he doesn't have access. He can be asked by the defence in their own examination what the, uh, the bases are for, for his conclusions which they challenge. ក៏ក្នុងឋានៈជាអ្នកជំនាញផ្អែកលើការសិក្សាស្រាវជាតិរបស់គាត់ But the most important thing is that the 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 មន្ត្រីរដ្ឋបាលតុលាការជាងលោកទៅកន្លែងសម្រាក់ <coughs> ឯកសារព្យាប់ដែលនឹងដេកាតំណោះស្រាយដែលលើកឡើងអំបាញ់ <coughs> ដើម្បីបន្តការតាំងសម្រួលដេកដល់ហើយបើអាចពិចារណាបានក៏សូមបញ្ជាក់ផងដែរអំពីពេលវេលាทั้งคิว Mr. President um, on, on the last issue um, we hope uh, there will be some scope to uh, accommodate us based um, in light of rather all of the delays that we've experienced since uh, yesterday um, if we are still able to um, use up the entire two and a half days allocated to us within those two and a half days total um, we will take uh, close to two days uh, and leave the rest to the civil parties uh, I, I want to stress that we will absolutely try to move um, expeditiously uh, and uh, we, we will try and deal uh, with the most important issues uh, but approximately uh, two days or perhaps a little bit less for the prosecution and then the remainder for the civil parties. Would you like me to proceed? Yes, Your Honour. 
Oui, Monsieur le Président, une fois de plus, je vais regretter que la partie civile ne puisse profiter que du temps que pourrait lui laisser le procureur. Je considère qu'il est normal que les procureurs disposent d'un temps, du temps qu'ils estiment nécessaire pour poser leurs questions. Et je crois qu'une autre partie, comme la partie civile, doit pouvoir aussi profiter du temps nécessaire dont elle estime devoir bénéficier. Nous avons besoin de 5 heures. Nous avons indiqué à Madame, euh, le, Madame Suzanne Lang que nous avions besoin de ces 5 heures. Et euh, nous avons ici des confrères qui ont préparé ce sujet très sérieusement, qui viennent de l'étranger pour poser leurs questions. Il n'est pas concevable que la partie civile ne puisse pas, dans un temps raisonnable, bien sûr, comme d'habitude d'ailleurs, poser les questions qu'elle estime nécessaires. Donc je souhaiterais que nous puissions bénéficier de ces 5 heures. Je vous en remercie. ตามวิธีนทําไมได้ออกจํารัฐบาลกําหนดคือมีแต่การบันทอยที่มันบ่อนแทมเปลวิเลียเอาไอ้ที่กรุ๊ปพิกีต่างอ้อขนมนี้
just a minor housekeeping matter. You will note that your microphone switches on with a slight delay after I finish. The reason for that is that the AB unit is simply waiting for, you, for the interpretation of my answers into command and, and French to be complete so that we have a full record. So if you could um, uh, wait for the to come on and, and then give us your answers. Looking at the tragedy of Cambodian history, and this is in Chapter 3, the document number is E3-14, this particular book is only available in English. The relevant ERN is 0019397. So if you look through those hard copies, if you simply look for numbers 97 uh, uh, in the top left hand corner. Um, this is a passage that I wish to focus on. And it's a discussion of the 1960 Congress uh, of the Communist Party. He states, the Congress has received considerable scholarly attention. Much about it remains uncertain. But three facts emerge. One is that Salazar was appointed at the Congress to the number three position on a newly constituted Central Committee just below Tu Samut. In Nunchia. The second is that the KPRP changed its name on this occasion to the Khmer Workers' Party, placing it semantically on a level with the BWP, the Vietnamese Workers' Party. We also know that Son Yok Min, in absentia, earned a place on the Central Committee, and the brief following passage. Yung Suri and Koi Tuan were the only intellectuals besides Salat Sa to be brought onto the committee. The next passage is in the same book over the page. Um, moreover, in view of the communists' activities in Cambodia over the next six years or so, there is no possibility that resolutions passed at the meeting in 1960 espoused a truly independent line. Nonetheless, in hindsight, the participants were clearly breaking into factions. One of these, the eventual victor, was Pol Pot's own. Another, with links to the ICP, the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, and roots in the eastern part of the country, was personified by Sao Pim. Now, if I could ask you, Professor, to uh, describe for the chamber your findings uh, and your conclusions as to the significance uh, of this Congress, and of course you point to the uh, to certain points of appointments within the committee and the change of the party's name. Uh, could you expand on this for us briefly? Uh, thanks very much and good morning. And before I answer your uh, question, I'd like to apologize to the court for what was clearly an oversight on my part in making a very brief uh, moment of conversation with the prosecutor. No, has no intention of doing that. It was my mistake, and I'm sorry for it. Now, as regards the uh, passage cited, the Congress of 1960 uh, has was marked by Pol Pot and uh, uh, particularly in things that he, he's written and said as the date, the official date of the start of the Communist Party, the, the Communi the, of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, saying it was nearly founded in 1951, but we don't talk about that because the, the uh, genuine foundation occurred in 1960. And what happened in the genuine foundation uh, event, of course, was that Pot himself came onto the Central Committee for the first time, and, uh, the, and it went along with Yang Suri and, uh, and Khoi Tuan. And this group uh, constitu eventually constituted a, a faction might be too strong a word to use, and I'm not uh, referring to any uh, subsequent documents in the closing order or anything when I say that, but I see now this book uh, that may have been, faction might be a strong word to use this, Elements is more likely. These, these people did not uh, break apart in later times. Uh, but yeah, this was a very significant uh, meeting, uh, and it was a place where the Communist Party began to move out of its uh, period of rather of inactivity and uh, toward having a set of proposals that were felt to be appropriate for Cambodia uh, and to be uh, 
no longer under the uh, guidance, uh, formal or informal, of uh, Vietnam and the Inter-China Communist Party. So yes, this is a very significant uh, occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Moving on to the next uh, significant date, a date that you consider significant, um, and it is the 1962 uh, period. Um, and, it, and again, it's dealt with in both Brother Number One and Tragedy of Cambodian History. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, I'll simply read a passage from the Tragedy of Cambodian History. Um, and might need to refer to the other book as well. But, um, at ERN 00193 again, this is a, a, a English ERN, the only one available. You, you, we have the following passage. Soon after these events, the WPK's Urban Committee, perhaps fearful of Sihanouk, convened a General Assembly. Some documents referred to it as a Congress. Its main decision was to confirm Sal Saar as the Secretary of the WPK Central Committee, replacing Tu Samot, who was now presumed to have been killed. Two of the 12 positions on the enlarged committee were taken by intellectuals who had, who had studied in France, number three in Syria and number 11, Son Sen. Son Yok Min in Vietnam was again elected in absentia and Vaughan Vet joined the committee for the first time. I will also read, uh, for the purposes of, of, of continuity, uh, before I ask you some questions, um, a relevant passage from Brother Number One. This is a document. I do apologize. The passage I just read was from Brother Number One. So that was E3 slash 17. No, there is a mistake in our notes. Uh, that was from tragedy. We're moving on to Brother Number One. Um, Brother number one is E3 slash 17. This is available in English and Khmer. The relevant English ERN is 00392977-8 and Khmer ERN 00821727. Again, I'll be uh, very brief with this passage. Uh, you state, uh, both by then, Sa and Sari were both high-ranking members of the party. Their positions had been confirmed at a special party congress convened in the wake of the Siem Reap demonstrations, but before Sihanouk's return. Uh, At the meeting, Sa replaced Tu Samut as secretary of the party. Moon Chia kept the second position. And a little bit further down in that same, uh, on that same page, uh, you state, what was important about the Congress was that it locked Salat Sa, Moon Chia, and Ying Suri into positions in the party hierarchy that they retained for many years. Uh, I apologize for the length of uh, some of these passages. Um, if you could elaborate for us on the importance of this 1962 uh, Congress following the disappearance of Tu Samut and what you describe about the locking into positions in the party hierarchy of Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia and Nguyen Siri. Uh, Sure. <coughs> I don't think there's much to expand on from what I said there. Uh, this, uh, leadership a group uh, of the party. Some, there's some question later on, some ambiguity about whether uh, Yung Sri or Son Sen was number three, but that doesn't matter. I mean, Son Sen was also in this very members leadership group. Uh, starting to move toward a sort of consolidation. I think uh, some other writers have said, oh, this meant a uh, kind of a semi-coup by the French educated uh, members of the party. I think it's very important to remember that Nguyen Chia has never uh, been in France and it was a number second man for a long time, uh, was not subject to French intellectual patterns and so forth. I think some of that is a, is a bit of a, uh, of a, a misleading uh, suggestion that this is somehow sort of a French faction. It's just that there were 
uh, some of them had studied in France. Uh, but it's significant that these four people, including Son Sen, uh, then formed basically a core of leadership that continued later on once they came to power. Uh, should be said, of course, that the only importance of this Congress is that they did come to power because this is a very ill-equipped, ineffective, uh, frightened, uh, concealed uh, party. Uh, that it wasn't, uh, I mean, it's rather like the childhood of Mao Zedong is only important because of what happened later. <laughs> this is this, this important for the history of the party, but its intrinsic importance is only to these particular people because they were actually hoping uh, you know, to seize power. This is the reason they were forming their party. They hoped at some time to be victorious. And so they were, they're the optimists in the room, uh, surrounded by people who had no expectation that anything like that would ever happen. Thank you, Professor, and I, and I thank you for uh, your brief uh, answers. We will move forward now, skip a number of years um, in the interest of time uh, and uh, make a, a brief pause at 1966 and 1967. Uh, these are discussed again in Brother Number One and in Tragedy of Cambodian History uh, in both books, uh, Chapters 5 and um, To uh, save time, there are a number of important passages here, but again, to save time, um, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, read very, two very short ones from Brother Number One. Uh, this is at English ERN 0392988 and Khmer ERN 0082179. Professor, you indicate here, and I quote, and I should say that you're, you're, you're dealing here with a uh, 1966 study session uh, which uh, you state was held in a new headquarters in Ratnakiri. And you state, quote, the escalation of the Vietnam War and developments in Indonesia and Cambodia made the 1966 study session a turning point in the history of the Cambodian Communist Party because they persuaded Sa that the party ta party's tactics had to be changed. Then over the page, you state the following. Sa and the others made two important tactical decisions at the 1966 study session. They changed the party's name from the Revolutionary Workers' Party to the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and they moved some of their key personnel to the remote province of Ratnakiri in Cambodia's northeast. Could you Tell us, um, again, briefly, um, why you considered that by this stage the party's tactics, that the, the leadership had decided that the party's tactics had to be changed, and that that included the change of the party name and move of key personnel. Yes, I think the uh, events in Indonesia were 1965-1966, uh, an estimated half a million alleged communists were uh, put to death by the forces of the Indonesian government. Was this, if you want to use a terrible phrase, kind of a wake-up call to the Cambodian communists. They said, here's a, here's a country where the Communist Party has just about been wiped out by the government. And they were a small group. They felt, I think, that, sorry, perhaps it was in their interest to move away from the populated areas of Office 100 in eastern Cambodia to a more secure base. Uh, I think also um, felt that they could no longer operate with any kind of an open uh, front operations inside uh, Cambodia because they, they, they were in danger. So the whole party went underground and uh, in effect disappeared. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was a and it was in this area, this, this base in uh, northeastern uh, Cambodia, where they remained for over the next three years, uh, basically just, we, we don't know exactly what they were doing, but obviously what it seems to me they were doing was were planning policies for when they would seize power, rather than hiding from Sinox police or things that they'd been doing before. This is a period of policy making, a period of consolidation, 
and a period uh, of also they were gaining strength. Recruits were coming to them from the cities, particularly in, in the local region of Rajnakiri, they recruited a fair number of uh, of minority people. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a crucial change. And I think the interesting point that's not mentioned in this book, but it's interesting that the, seems to me the events in adjoining uh, Vietnam, which of course are much more well known to the people in this realm, uh, perhaps are more well known than what has happened in Indonesia. But less, put less attention by the Cambodian communists. That was, they didn't mention this in their, we well, must change our tactics in order to uh, play some role in the Vietnam War, but rather to protect ourselves, we must avoid what happened to the, Indone we must work to avoid what happened to the Indonesian party, which was, it was demolished. The Indonesian party was just obliterated, basically, and uh, several tens of thousands of people were in prison after that. The ones who weren't killed were in prison for often 10 years. So it was a very scary set of events down there. <coughs> Thank you. Um, you've, you've indicated uh, just now that, uh, uh, based on your research, the party was then based, or the, or the uh, leadership of the party was then based in uh, the Ratnakiri area for another three years. Um, you discuss in your books, uh, again, both in Brother Number One and Tragedy of Cambodian History, uh, the uh, some lot uprising, uh, as uh, some lot have called it, um, and then the uh, subsequent um, uh, hostilities in January 1968, um, which were subsequently, um, if you like, described as the birth of the Revolutionary Army. Um, uh, perhaps if we can uh, rely on your memory of those passages, or if you wish, I can, I can uh, read them out to you. But um, if you're able to very briefly uh, summarize the importance, if any, of uh, the uh, um, emergence, if you like, of armed struggle in that period between 67 and 70, uh, and then we'll move on to post 70. Yeah, the, uh, the beginning of armed struggle was significant uh, primarily uh, as a historical, uh, iconic historical event in the history of the Communist Party. It didn't amount to much. It was a handful of weapons were seized from a police station in Badenbong province. Uh, <coughs> the somewhat rebellion has been studied extensively, but no conclusive uh, results have come out of it to these any connections between the uh, CPK and the uh, rebellion. Uh, they have members of the uh, of the party have denied that they were connected. I think this is probably true. I think this is a disconnected uh, uh, a revolt. Uh, uh, conducted by individual people who were upset by government policies in that area. So, but Senuk saw with the Samrat rising, as I as I said in the book, that uh, for the first time Cambodians, without inspiration from overseas, could or not visible inspiration from overseas, uh, were always the enemies in the Senuk regime, were people who were not Cambodians, were able to revolt against his regime. So he got angry and frightened and quite and decided to fight back. He said uh, he, just, he decided to really crush this rebellion with great force. He'd never gone after his own. His first never gone after Cambodian people before to this extent. I think, uh, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know what exactly was said, but it seems to me the, the natural response of Pol Pot and his colleagues would have been, okay, we better get an armed struggle too. There's no point postponing this because he is going to, his forces are going to attack our forces. And which is indeed what started to happen in, uh, yeah, in 68, 69, you started to get skirmishes between the army, which is permitted now to go after these local people, which I think they knew, they knew who they were, they knew where they were, but they didn't do anything. Started to be some fighting. So you're starting to get I guess the very beginnings of the Civil War do occur mm -hmm. under the last years of Sinuk rather than breaking out uh, under Lo Nol. Thank you. Um, moving on then to the 1970 period. Um, 
And of course, again, you discuss this in, in both books, uh, the Tragedy of Cambodian History, uh, Chapter 7 is, rele is relevant here, and Brother Number 1, um, mainly Chapter 5. Um, again, I will try and um, uh, avoid reading long passages. Um, I believe you're, you're intimately familiar with, with uh, the events here. But um, essentially, um, you describe in Brother Number One at English ERN 00392998 and following, and also Khmer ERN 00821751. You describe the um, events following the coup the 18th of March 1970 uh, by Sirik Matak and Long Mol, uh, and you also deal with the presence of Salot Tsar in Beijing um, and the negotiations, uh, or rather communications, if you like, which take place and which culminate in the issuance of a broadcast um, on the 23rd of March by uh, Norodom Sihanouk. I don't want to deal with that in great detail because it, these are largely matters of, of, of public record. Um, but I will read uh, one quote and then perhaps ask you to um, elaborate on, on the key aspects of, of these developments. And we're looking here now at uh, brother number one. Uh, this is in chapter six now. Uh, English ERN 00393-001 and Khmer ERN 0082-1752-3. And you say the following, Salaf Sa did not emerge from hiding and it was more than a year before he was even identified as an official on Sihanouk's national front. Inside the country, authority was supposedly placed in the hands of the three gods, Q Sampong, ostensibly working on Sihanouk's behalf. And a little bit further down, Sihanouk, ensconced in Beijing with an entourage of chefs, courtiers and hangers-on, was a figurehead from the start. And a little bit further on, towards the end of that paragraph, the front's publications, financed and printed in China, conveyed the impression that the guerrillas inside Cambodia were fighting on his behalf. I know I'm asking a lot. Um, if you could give us a very brief outline of your findings uh, in relation to the events following the, coup, uh, the, the decision to form a front, and then the, um, the, the front's emergence and what you describe as Norodom Sihanouk's position as a figurehead. Oh, you're right, that's a very, uh, that's a complex question that goes into a lot of uh, areas that I <coughs> haven't not studied in great detail. Uh, it's a, from Sinuk's point of view, the uh, coup was a uh, surprise and a, uh, an, in, an enormous insult, personal insult. And when he arrived in uh, Beijing, he was ready to make a whole lot of uh, contradictory decisions. He was discouraged from doing these by making these decisions by Zhou Enlai, his friend for many years, who encouraged him to work to fight against the Lonol, new Lonol regime. Uh, Pol Pot was known to be in Beijing at this time for reasons we, we don't know what they are. We don't know why he was in Beijing, but he was. They summoned uh, Phan Van Dong up from uh, Hanoi very quickly, and so the, the elements of the front, which saw, saw concealed, never came up forward to say he was an element of the front. Decisions were made uh, to form this front under Sinuk's, in quotation marks, uh, leadership. I think he knew that this was symbolic, but he also knew that this was the most he could get, and it was a way of retaining some of his prestige, and also not, not just merely his prestige, but his feeling, maintaining his feeling, which I think was very deep in his character, that he was, in fact, the embodiment of the Cambodian people, and these coup, the coup people were 
or traitors. Uh, very much a, a point of view that you find recurring under the Karahuch regime in complete opposition. I mean, anybody who wasn't exactly with the regime was a traitor. So, yeah, the front period is, is an interesting period. As you know, uh, acted in public as if he was uh, the leader, but was telling, as always, uh, telling journalists. Uh, Oh, he said, when, when the time comes, they'll spit me out like a cherry pit, he said. Uh, and he had uh, uh, documented uh, bad relations with Ian Suri and Beijing. Those two just did not get along, as a matter of record. He didn't know what the CPK's programs were. He wasn't kept in touch with that. But he knew there was something that he didn't, didn't like. You know, something he didn't like, something not right, right about but where they seem to be going, sort of a radical twist. So I'd say it's an interesting period from his point of view. I think the front never made much sense to the people who were running the party inside Cambodia, except to make sure that the three ghosts who were actually acting in front of, uh, as a front in front of them uh, did not depart from any uh, policies of the party that had been arranged in secret. They wouldn't let these people come out with their own policies. These were working for the CPK. Thank you. ໃນສາມຽນຕົນປໍປີຄັ້ງແນ່ບໍ່ປາຍສົມອ້ອຍລູກແນ່ຈຳນຽງເຍຍບານຍຶດໃນຊິງນີ້ປີປູຮໍແ
relying on these categories, it was thought guaranteed the disappearance of feudal or capitalist elements. Uh, if you could expand briefly on um, the policy, if any, that uh, these documents reflected in relation to uh, the issue of class. We just, we just need to wait for the microphone. Okay, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it seems, although the direct evidence of what was said at these uh, confabs is mess missing, that the party leadership spent the years in Ratanakiri fine-tuning and developing policies that they would put into effect when, not if, they never said if, when they came to power. Uh, so it seems to me they started to behave uh, in a way uh, like a party that was was in power and that needed to uh, uh, expand its membership uh, in order to seize power, to expand its membership. And for its membership, it felt, because it was already engaged, it was engaged in a civil war with Lanau, that it couldn't seek support from the kind of people it was fighting. Its support had to come for ideological reasons. Uh, from the poorest of the poor, the so-called worker class of Cambodia, which as far as I know has never been, didn't exist. There was very little manufacturing, but <coughs> these are dogmatic uh, uh, places from which uh, the diamonds could be drawn from the earth. And also, to be fair uh, to them, this was also the segment of the society that probably felt uh, victims of inequity and so forth had genuine uh, objections to the traditional Cambodian government. These had already been expressed, for example, in the uh, peasant uprising at Samloan. Moving on to um, an issue which uh, you discuss again in, in uh, brother number one um, and I should say by this point you indicate that the leadership had moved uh, from Ratnakiri to uh, uh, an area near Phnom Santuk uh, near the Prati Pong border um, the, an event which you, which you deal with in brother number one Chapter 6, uh, English ERN 00393 005 and Khmer ERN 00821756 is a July 1976 uh, school uh, study session <coughs> and, and a congress. And the relevant passage is the following. In July 1971, a, quote, party school session for the entire country, end quote, summoned 60-odd cadre to the party's headquarters in, quote, the forest in the northern zone, end quote. Salat Sa presided over the meeting, which elected an enlarged central committee and proclaimed that the Cambodian Communist Party had entered a new phase in its history, namely a national democratic revolution to overthrow feudalism and imperialism. And then a little bit further down in that same passage, quote, without meaning, I apologize, I rephrase that, without mentioning Vietnam, the text noted that the revolution must, quote, be appropriate for our country, unquote, and that the party's leaders, also unnamed, were to command all aspects of the revolution. This is, um, you're, you're referring to a, to a, to a, to a journal, uh, to a party journal in that, in that second quote. Um, if I could ask you first, what is the significance, if any, uh, or perhaps, uh, first, what is the meaning, perhaps, of the concept of national democratic revolution to overthrow feudalism and imperialism, as you understand it, uh, based on your research? 
and whether that had any significance in this period. Yeah, the party leaders in 71, <coughs> July 71, uh, already were aware of two things. One was that the uh, primarily the North Vietnamese and, uh, and NLF forces had given uh, severe blows to Lo Nol's army. Uh, these Vietnamese forces had been aided and, uh, and uh, supported by the uh, local Khmer Rouge forces who were being trained and uh, armed uh, to a large extent by Vietnam at this stage. Uh, they knew that the, I think they saw uh, a certain amount, to a certain extent, they saw victory in the distance but in sight. And they, having seen that, uh, perceived that, they decided, they, 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 they stated that their revolution, uh, they're the judge of all this, no one, there was no discussion, had reached a new, new stage. The new stage was one where they could, as it says there, attack, uh, attack revolution, to overthrow feudalism and imperialism. Well, this is in a party document that was not accessible to Nordom Sihanouk, but this is, uh, Sihanouk is a person of extreme uh, sensitivity of uh, antennae. I think he may have sensed this slight gain of overconfidence in, in Syria. So this is a supposition I don't want to go too far, but that the regime is because feudalism is a code word for him. Imperialism is a code word for the United States. And th so this is, this is going to be a war against the old society and America and all its uh, all the uh, uh, things. So yeah, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a decisive. It was a decisive uh, meeting, uh, <coughs> and uh, one that marked, I think, the. Uh, uh, a statement of saying where the party was going to go, and it went ahead, it went ahead in that direction when they came to power. Thank you. And we will come back to um, the issue of, of, of struggle with, with those um, uh, groups that you just described. Um, just looking um, for another minute at that um, Congress, in tragedy of Cambodian history, chapter 6, this is at ERN 00193299. You deal with uh, decisions, uh, again, um, or other decisions, if you like, from that Congress. Um, and to summarize, them, rather than to read the, the passage, um, you say that one important decision was to send in Syria to Beijing, another was to celebrate the September 30th anniversary of the Congress of 1960. Um, and what I'm interested in is a declaration that you referred to in the context of that new uh, party anniversary date, <coughs> and this is what you say at ERN 00193299. No record of the celebration has survived, but the date chosen for the declaration of patriotic intellectuals issued in the liberated zone of Cambodia, September 30th, was probably not fortuitous and several members of the new committee, uh, including Sao Tsar, Son Sen, and Q Sam Han, signed the declaration. If I understand that passage correctly, and do please correct me if I am wrong, uh, there is an indication that members of the new committee included Sao Tsar, Son Sen, and Q Sam Han. Does that uh, refresh your memory in relation to the issue of Q Sampan's uh, membership uh, of uh, the Central uh, Committee, uh, which was uh, raised in part uh, yesterday. Uh, if not, uh, uh, if, if you're not sure about uh, it, and if you'll be speculating, then please uh, indicate so. Uh, 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 thank you, Mr. President. 
It seems that the way the question was phrased is rather leading. If he's going to read a passage, you can simply read the passage and then ask him to give an explanation as opposed to him giving his interpretation, that is the prosecution giving his interpretation and understanding what the passage means. In other words, leading the witness to a conclusion that the prosecution thinks it's necessary that fits their brief. So it's leading, we should, uh, we should uh, refrain from those sorts of techniques. I'm well aware of them, the prosecution is aware of them. They can ask the gentleman what he, uh, he understands that to be. And I understand that in this instance, it was for purposes of refreshing a witness's, uh, testimony, uh, witness's memory. But nonetheless, on a technical ground, uh, I object to this sort of question. Thank you. Mr. President, I, I think that the, the question was entirely uh, uh, appropriate in its form. I was very careful. I asked the professor to correct me. Um, but I have, I have in, in the interest of time, I'm, I'm happy to move on and simply ask the professor um, what, uh, if he could expand on that, on that passage, ignoring uh, my question uh, and simply looking at the membership of the new committee in uh, 1971. Let me either delay or, or not answer that. To, I have to look at some other, other material first before I'm absolutely clear. <coughs> It might be on the preceding page, but I, I don't have the book with me. Uh, professor, uh, do you think you will be able to do so um, in, in the next break of 20 minutes or, or perhaps over lunch? Yeah, if, I, if someone has a complete copy of my book, I could do it in the break. I just want to see what I've said of the, uh, about that committee in the, those two pages there. Mr. President, with your permission, we have a copy of the book can, and can give it to the experts um, if the Chamber so orders. Um, otherwise, I'm mindful of time. And, uh, we're at your discretion. We can continue and take a break. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, Mr. President. It's uh, a tragedy of Cambodian history. Uh, the book that um, we've, we've been discussing, it's, it's on the list uh, for these hearings, and we have a hard copy uh, which we can provide to the experts. អង្គមរះអនុញ្ញាតអលីដល់ពេលសំលម៉ោងនឹងសម្រាក់ហើយហើយមុននឹងប្រកាសសម្រាក់អង្គមរះសម្រាច់លើសំណើសុំនៅត
อบกอสตัวหนังไอสำรวจดาวตึงตึงดองระเบียงกอดเชื่อมวยนังกรมวิจิบีกาเปียกระไรบกอดบานองค์เงินแปรสำรายหยุดเพิ่มตามตำราส้มระบบจุนจุบจอดเอ็งสตรีแต่บานสนาส้มตามเยะวิจิบีกาเปียกระไรบกอดแลบบังสุดจะรวมลำนาการสำนักได้ได้ตัวในขนมตุบสำนักการนี้เอาอีลูกเอ็งสตรีเติมบนโตตามด้านกิจสำนักการสำนักการปียังไงปีบนตุบคงครวนมวยทันนักรามซาสำนักการนี้ตามระเบียงอบกอสตัวสำหรับระเบียงเปียกสำนักการจีบบนโตสำหรับไงนี้ให้ประกอบไว้ภายในสตูจอบประปอนสตูสำหรับจุนจอบเจ้าเอียงสรีตามด้านกิจนาการสำนาการพิจมงายสำหรับกิจนาการสำนาการได้หนึ่งต่อทั่วในไทยนี้ประกอบไว้ในระยะที่คงแข็งนองครวนดูเอียงสรีจากการประตุกคงครวนมวยทันนกรมสำนาการได้มีเรียบจำตุกจะใช้ในองค์ประกอบสตูสำหรับกอดอังยมแรกประกาศสำหรับมาพินิติจะปีปีนิสเตอร์โฮดามองดอมมวยกว่าพรามนิติส่งมาเจอโจวิ่งดำเนินบรรทุกกิจนาการสำนาการมันเทรดอัตราตลาดกาสรวมรวมประดอลกันไรสำหรับสมรุมในบรรทุกสำหรับตรงจำสำหรับสะสมเนี่ยอย่างนี้ให้หนึ่งเอาจริงก็ตลอดมาการไกลต่อตะไคร่กั้มขนมตุบสันมาการในเว้นเดือบิเลมองได้บางกำหนดขังเอาใหม่ไม่นี่สำหรับเจ้าสมกรองเจอ